Hey there, my name is Peyton Macy's and you're listening to AnyCast. AnyCast is about anything and everything. We have some cool guests on sometimes, or sometimes it's just me. But enjoy today's episode and I hope you learn something new. Monday, the fourth one actually. Today's Metallica Monday is going to be a very interesting one because not only do we have an album, we also have an EP. And actually, we're going to start reviewing the EP first. But everybody, welcome on back to AnyCast. I'm your host, Peyton Macy's. Uh, and this is another Metallica Monday. Uh, I remembered today is Sunday, so this is supposed to come out tomorrow. And I still hadn't listened to the albums. I told myself last night I should probably turn one on. Never did. So I just got done listening to the $5.98 EP. EP, of course, means experimental play. Uh, The $5.98 EP, and then it has a dash and says Garage Days Revisited. Or actually, Re-Revisited remastered so maybe they just put the extra re in there because of uh remastering i'm not really sure this one clocks in at under 25 minutes at 24 minutes 49 seconds um and it has five songs so you know typical ep you know usually an ep will have like eh, five to eight songs i think uh somewhere in there maybe four to eight is a little bit more accurate No, I I actually would say five. Uh, Most EPs that I know is five or eight. There's really no really in between. It's kind of weird when you have like seven songs, maybe six songs, like, but five songs, that's pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to be honest. This one, I didn't think it was going to be great. It's better than what I thought it was going to be. But overall, it is no Master of Puppets. It is no Ride the Lightning, and I'd actually rather listen to Kill Em All, which you guys know my thoughts on it. I don't hate Kill Em All, but I didn't think it was the greatest thing ever. Um, This one has five tracks, and one of the tracks I I really don't like because of the content in the track. It's a very dark and disturbing track. The first track is called Helpless. Helpless is an okay song. Uh, not my favorite. It's decent, though. Uh, Small Hours is one of my more favorite songs. I forgot that I had to pick two favorite songs off all these albums. I think I did that in the Metallica Monday with Master of Puppets. Uh, but sm- the Small Hours and the Wait, which are tracks two and three, are my favorite ones in this uh, album, or EP. Crash Course in Brain Surgery is the fourth track. And then the final track, Last Caress, slash green hell is an explicit track and uh let's just say that track is not in my opinion good at all i don't like what they say in the track i don't like what is being spoken uh you know metallica of course it's a metal band but they're not exactly devil worshippers but they talk about some very dark subject material i don't really want to go over it uh right now i would highly encourage everybody to go check that out if they would like to if you just want to take my word for it and not know what it is great you know i can understand that 100 percent um and as you can see at only four minutes into this podcast uh just about four minutes here i don't really have a whole lot to say on that one like there's not great songs they're just eps uh i am writing the metallicum uh, Iceberg, which will probably not come out until a very later date. And when I say a very later date, 
I think we're doing Metallica Mondays. We're starting here in June, and I think it's going to take us until uh, September because I cut it so we don't have to do all of October, maybe a little bit of October. So it'll probably come out in August, but uh, I'm pulling up my uh, Metallica Mondays iceberg. Um, Metallica iceberg. And I remember writing about something um in this. Uh, yes, so Jason Newstead. Newstead, he was a member of Metallica. Uh, he was with Metallica for a very long time. He was the bassist on such albums and Justice for All, which is going to be the next one that we review in just a little bit here. Uh, Load and Reload, and of course, The Black Album, which we actually will be reviewing The Black Album next week, which I think is going to be my absolute favorite Metallica album. I think that's really like most people know The Black Album and most of the songs on The Black Album, and that's what they associate Metallica with. I'm sorry if my dogs are barking and it's picking up here. But Jason has bass solos, or bass, sorry, bass solos on the 598 EP. Uh, you know, so he doesn't really get to sing, but he does get bass solos, and I think that's kind of interesting. But like overall, I just don't really care for this album. If I was going to own Metallica albums um, on vinyl or on CD, I have a record uh, player, and I have... Ride the Lightning and the Black Album on record. I listened to Ride the Lightning on record and reviewed it. I will listen to Black Album on uh, the record. But of course, I have to get Master of Puppets because I actually do really like that album. Uh, and I would also maybe get in just as far. I haven't listened to it yet. You'll hear my thoughts about that in a little bit. But this is definitely one of those that I would totally just not care about getting. Uh, it's just so meh to me um i think i mentioned this before but i will be doing a tier list video and it will be a podcast uh of my ranking of each metallica album in fact i think i'm going to start writing my script for it because i actually want to commentate on some stuff and not just really go off the fly like i usually do with the tier list i you know i actually have some things to say about what each album is to me uh, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, if I'm going to be really completely honest, this is probably going to be in my, like, D tier, because, of course, we have S, A, B, C, D, F. Nobody uses the E tier. It's lame. Most of the time, I actually get rid of D sometimes, but I think I would use the D tier just for this specific EP. I don't really think it's great. I don't think it's anything super special, but of course I have to pick two favorite songs from each thing, which is going to get very hard in a little bit here in, I think, August, once we get into some of the crappier albums of Metallica. According to the fans, I haven't listened yet, so I can't really comment, but especially something like Saint Anger, which is their worst album, according to all fans, uh, aside from Lulu. But yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about here um, with the 598 EP. Uh, I know that the YouTube video of this is just this part of the podcast. And for you guys on YouTube, sorry about it. But it's okay because you will also get the uh, And Just For All uh, out right now. So you can go check that out uh, right now. You guys can go listen to the And Just For All part if you guys are on youtube but if you guys are on the podcast just stick around a little bit it's just going to cut right over to my thoughts on and justice for all and i get to record that in about an hour or so because the hour the album is about an hour long or so so yeah stay tuned and if you're on youtube have a great day go check out the next video peace out to everybody on youtube if you're on the podcast Stay right here. You don't want to miss a thing as we review and justice for all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everybody who is listening to this episode. We are reviewing now and justice for all. So welcome back. Um, and justice for all, you know, the next part 
of this Metallica Monday episode. If you're on YouTube, then this is a completely different video. Um, but yeah, we're here to talk about And Justice for All. And I gotta say, And Justice for All, in my opinion, is maybe the best, definitely actually the best Metallica album I've heard yet. And Justice for All was really good, okay? Blackened is the first track on this album. Well, actually, before I get into the tracks, there are nine tracks on this album. This album is a little over an hour, clocking in at an hour and five minutes. Yes, uh, nine songs. And this was released in 1988. This was actually, I believe, the final Metallica album of the 80s era. So, yeah. But let's start to listen or talk about this Uh this album, I think, really just, it became more of a turning point for Metallica. It was, you know, this is, I think, when Metallica went a little bit bigger, because this album was really big. They went on a big tour with this one, and then the next album, next Metallica Monday, we'll be talking about, uh... The album actually titled Metallica, which, of course, is otherwise known as the Black Album. And that, of course, is their most famous album. Very, very famous songs on there. Very amazing songs. But this one, I think, really kind of put them on a map for people who are a little bit more mainstream. Um, I mean, one has... 469 million plus listens every single song on this album at least has a million none of them cross over 100 million except for uh one but you know this is of course a long time after this album came out but i'm sure that this album was pretty successful due to the amazing songs at track number one we have blackened blackened is amazing Blackened is definitely one of my two uh, favorite songs because if you guys have been listening to the series of Metallica Mondays, you guys know that I have to put two songs from each Metallica thing into my favorites. When it comes to singles, which there are some singles that we actually do have to listen to, I don't really know what I'm going to do, but yeah, whatever. Blackened is a great song. Uh, Blackened is a great way to start off this album. It is very good. And Justice for All is an, it's a pretty good song. I don't think it's my absolute favorite. It's one of those that I would put on. Uh, Eye of the Beholder is very interesting, very interesting stuff. Um, this album has like a kind of scornful and rageful type of theme about justice and death and sorrow and destruction. Like most Metallica albums, that's the themes. Uh, but as we will see with one, is the fourth track. Easily one of my favorites on here. One is one of those tracks that really just is wild. Uh, this track is about um, a man who went to war, a soldier. He has come back with no arms, no legs, and no eyes. It's a very sad song, and he sings, uh, he screams about the absolute pain and horrors of just darkness. He can't see anything except just darkness, a dark, empty void. It's a very interesting song. It's a very sad song. It's a seven-minute long song. It has amazing, amazing instrumentals. This entire album is packed full of amazing instrumentals. Every single song, the instrumentals just carry the song. I mean, of course, some of the lyrics in these are really great. The Shortest Straw is easily one of my least favorite in this bunch. Uh, it is my least favorite on the entire album. I just don't really care for it. I probably wouldn't ever listen to this again. Now, Harvester of Sorrow, it's not blackened and it's not one, but it's a really, really good song. Harvester of Sorrow is a really dope song, uh, very interesting, very much Metallica, you know. Uh, you know, you talk about something dark and you're just, 
shredding a metal guitar and just making some amazing music, you know? The fried, or the fried, yeah, the fried, the fried, sorry, not fried. This ain't fried chicken, this is the fried ends of sanity. It's a very interesting song, um, but I think that one of the more interesting songs for me are tracks seven, or sorry, eight and nine, specifically eight. Eight reminds me of the track in Kill 'Em All, uh, the track Anesthesia. If you guys don't remember, in when I did that uh, Kill 'Em All album review, Anesthesia was that one on the album that was just instrumentals. To Live Is To Die is very interesting because it starts out with this like non-rock instrumental. It It's really interesting. Or maybe it is like rock, but it's not. It, it might be classified as rock. It's more like metal. Or sorry, it's not metal. It could be classified as rock, which of course Metallica is metal. And then somehow it shifts into like metal and there's a few like voicing things and then it fades out back to what it started with to close out the song. It's a great, great, great song. And then Dryer, Dyer's Eye. Dyer's Eye is one of the explicit ones on this album. It's the only explicit track actually. I don't actually understand exactly why it's explicit. Uh, I was listening to it. Uh, I would have to listen to it again to gauge what's super explicit about Dyer's Eye, but I will say Dyer's Eye is a great song. This entire album is just packed full of songs that I just love, kind of like Master of Puppets. Uh, easily there are certain you know Master of Puppets songs that I'm like, eh, maybe I wouldn't listen to that again, but there are definitely some that I'm like, yep, I gotta play that again and again and again. This is really the reason that I wanted to do Metallica Mondays is, of course, to celebrate 72 seasons and, sadly, the end of Metallica as a band. But also, and I think more importantly, I wanted to, you know, talk about these songs because I know some of the songs, you know, from Metallica. And I was like, you know, when I came back, I was just like, you know what, might as well literally listen to every single Metallica album, especially since the band, you know, like, that was their final one. So, or at least that's what they've said. I, I think that will be their final one, 72 seasons. But, you know, I I have wanted to do it for this, like the fun albums that I know I'm going to like. This actually, this album has a Funko Pop, and I actually have it um, of Lady Justice with the scales of justice and the sword, of course, um, you know, Lady Justice um, on the cover art of this album. And Lady Justice is a Funko Pop. Um, you know, and it's, it's just really cool. Um, but nevertheless, I liked it. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm trying to f get my feel with these album reviews. I mean, I love music, but I don't really know what to talk about because I don't want to just sit there and read like every single line of a song. I think somehow with master of puppets i did well in telling uh, a lot about vietnam and everything surrounding that album uh, and how i think it's about vietnam but nonetheless i hope you guys did enjoy this podcast um if you guys are listening on spotify and everything i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i do encourage you guys to go and check these uh, two out the 598 ep and injustice for all uh, I'm going to be linking both of those down in the description, uh, down below, of course. Uh, but with all that being said, um, I hope you guys have a great one. We're going to be having a podcast on the 28th. Uh, it'll also be up on the YouTube channel, hopefully on the 28th, of Reviewing Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And sometime this week, I'm supposed to be watching that Indiana Jones cut uh, with you guys in a watch party. Um, I'm thinking about doing it actually tomorrow. I think I will do tomorrow night. Um, on my channel. So just, you know, go hit subscribe on my YouTube channel. 
so you guys will be updated uh, on all that but you know then we have july and like i've said a few times on the podcast we have 10 straight days of podcasting and it's it's wild and then it goes back to a normal schedule so like it's going to get very much so blown up in july uh, over here on the podcast side of things, same thing would go for the uh, YouTube channel. I'm actually going to be uploading all my podcasts. I'm going to be starting to do that uh, now. Nowadays, um, some of the podcasts might be uploaded a little late, but, you know, who cares? Uh, but with all that being said, I hope you guys had a great one. hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday to talk about the final Spielberg and Lucas Indiana Jones film. Just a reminder, I have not seen that film in a very long time, so my memory should be uh, not great. So when I watch the movie, you know I'm going to have some movie first impressions, kind of, uh, you know, and not a lot of preconceived notions. I'm trying to go in there with a clear mind and just be like, you know what, I'm actually optimistic about this movie and i actually am i'm optimistic about the movie i hope it's better than i remembered uh and i'm i'm, I'm really hoping <laughs> that it's better than i remembered or else i'm gonna have to sit through another two-hour indiana jones movie that is particularly boring to me if you don't know what i'm talking about go watch my uh review of temple of doom i didn't particularly enjoy it as much as i hoped but anyways with all that being said peace out see you guys in the next one have a great day. Bye.